So whenever I do a feature, I do like to share the work of other people. So this is from Clace Oldenburg's I Am For, a statement from 1961. Clace Oldenburg, of course, is the famous pop artist, brother of Richard E. Oldenburg, who at one time, uh, he had been the director of the Museum of Modern Art and therefore, at one time, my boss. I am for an art that is political, erotical, mystical, that does something other than sit on its ass in the museum. I am for an art that grows up not knowing it is art at all, an art given the chance of having a starting point of zero. I am for an art that embroils itself with the everyday crap and still comes out on top. I am for an art that imitates the human that is comic, if necessary, or violent, or whatever is necessary. I am for an art that takes its form from the lines of life itself, that twists and extends and accumulates and spits and drips and is heavy and coarse and blunt and sweet and stupid as life itself. I am for an artist who vanishes, turning up in a white cap, painting signs or hallways. I am for an art that comes out of a chimney like black hair and scatters in the sky. I am for an art that spills out of an old man's purse when he is bouncing, bounced off a passing fender. I am for an art out of a doggy's mouth falling five stories from the roof. I am for the art that a kid licks after peeling away the wrapper. I am for an art that joggles like everyone's knees when the bus traverses an excavation. I am for an art that is smoked like a cigarette, smells like a pair of shoes. I am for an art that flaps like a flag or helps blow noses like a handkerchief. I am for an art that is put on and taken off like pants, which develops holes like socks, which is eaten like a piece of pie or abandoned with great contempt like a piece of shit. I am for an art covered with bandages. I am for an art that limps and rolls and runs and jumps. I am for an art that comes in a can or washes up on the shore. I am for an art that coils and grunts like a wrestler. I am for an art that sheds hair. I am for an art you could sit on. I am for an art you could pick your nose with or stub your toes on. I am for an art from a pocket, from deep channels of the ear, from the edge of a knife, from the corners of the mouth, stuck in the eye or worn on the wrist. I am for an art under the skirts and the art of pinching cockroaches. Clay Soldenberg. Thank you. And now for my own work, uh, my cousin, Dr. Christopher L. Trous, who has, um, he's a Latin teacher at James B. Caldwell High School and has taught two of Rick Mullen's daughters Latin, um, took a terrible fall. So this is, this portion is dedicated to him. He's not here tonight. A little section on falling, if I may. This, these uh, first pieces are from my book, Inside Out, Upside Down and Round and Round, with John J. Trous standing on his head on the cover, which I still do. Actually, you saw it. Right? This is called Momus Descending, Momus being the Greek god of ridicule. And those of you who are a little older in the room will remember President Gerald Ford's famous trip in Austria in 1975. Momus descending. Now, Peter Bregg of the Associated Press caught it in six shots of the camera. Momus descending. Deplaning in Salzburg, where Mozart was born, Maria von Trapp was married, and Virginia Hill expired. He glides down the stairs from the plane, his mate at his side with a transparent bumper shoot, smiling. One foot slips and he falls. All done in six short steps. Thank you. Betty Ford, uh, Betty Ford yeah. So this is uh, based on a true story from 1993, and it's called How Courtney Love Fell 
used the telephone, pushed a manager, got carried away, and Jilly learned a new word. And the epigraph comes from Jenny Holzer's Truisms. Decadence can be an end in itself. The talk of the town this season, not unlike that of the revelation of the amoral amor of Susan Sontag and Annie Leibovitz, that vicious connubium some years before, concern the solitary Manhattan ruckus of Courtney Love. While driving lazily then crazily some days later around the arch angularities of Philadelphia's Chinatown with Jill and Becky in the front, the latter spoke of the widow Cobain and her public fights and fire starting her backstabbing and public flights of violence and bad makeup, that messy <laughs> maquillage. My contribution was the fresh retelling of Courtney's fall just days before outside the Strand bookstore. Her hour-long occupation of its phone, the anxieties of its manager, her pushing him against the wall. Another fall. The police, the crowds, the sirens, the screaming cadaver of Courtney carried away. Lady Hole agape. And yet we recognize the contribution of Ms. Love, the smart manager and businesswoman, the passable acting, her acting out, the ability to shock an unshockable public, her rock, her role, her whole. Then Becky added that she pioneered the kinder whore look, and Jill inquired, and I conspired, that it's baby doll, only slutty. Kinder whore, what's this world coming to? Thank you. And now from my most recent book, Why Sing, is another poem on falling. Again, a true story. called Mrs. Jimson Falls. Last Sunday morning, I saw old Mrs. Jimson stepping out of her car, her co son coming around to help her out. And as she paused on the handicapped gradient on the way into church, she tottered, her cane collapsing beside her. Her eyeglasses were smashed, the bridge of her nose bruised, as she fell forward onto her face and belly that bore junkies and whores. And now I'll do a piece, I think I may have done this in an open before. Um, it's, uh, it's, a it's a translation of mine from the French. It, it's in my book, Exercises in High Treason. And, um, here it is, it's called Lark. Translation, it's a translation from the French. Lark, Lark, Lark. I'm going to pluck you. I'm going to pluck your head. I'm going to pluck your head and your head. Lark, Lark, oh Lark, Lark. Nice Lark, Lark. I'm going to pluck you. I'm going to pluck your eyes. I'm going to pluck your eyes and your head and your head, Lark. Lark, oh lark, nice lark, lark, I'm going to pluck you. I'm going to pluck your ears. I'm going to pluck your ears and your eyes and your eyes and your head and your head. Lark, lark, oh lark, nice lark, lark, I'm going to pluck you. I'm going to pluck your nose. I'm going to pluck your nose and your ears and your ears and your eyes and your eyes and your head and your head. Lark, lark, oh lark, nice lark, lark. I'm going to pluck you. I'm going to pluck your mouth. I'm going to pluck your mouth and your nose and your nose and your eyes and your eyes and your ears and your ears and your head and your head. Lark, lark, oh lark, nice lark. Lark, I'm going to pluck you. The original is by one of my favorite authors, Trad Anonymous. 
<laughs> you all should recognize that. Yeah? Alouette. Alouette, gentil alouette. It's a chicken plucking song from, from France. From my book, Picture This, which is a, a book of poems about art, photography, film, art history, that sort of thing, I have a poem that Rick Mullen, who's getting a lot of attention, even though he's not up here yet. You didn't mention my portrait on the back of the book. What's that? Oh, yeah. Why Singh has his portrait of me in paint on the back of the book. Yeah, it's because my poetry goes out of the bounds, you know, so we had to make it into a bigger. Um, we couldn't do it smaller. So this is from Picture This, and this is, Rick Mullen hates this uh, painter, Clifford Still, one of the abstract expressionists, one of the best abstract expressionists. So the title of the poem is Be Still for Clifford Still. And it's in Terzarima, picking up on one of um, Rick's great works in Terzarima. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> it is. It's a great, uh, it's a great poem, a book-length poem of his by uh, Soutine about another painter whose work I'm not particularly fond of, but whatever. Be still for Clifford Still. Be stir my art and let it drip upon this canvas, let it trip and navigate the vast geographies of times bygone, of future times of space and place and date, and let it still be still and let it drip upon the galaxies of inner fate and outer space and inner grace, the trip from there to here, from place to place and race in increments of accumulated drip in increments and drips and color trace and drips the still stalactite stalagmites and let it brace against the altered space of altered grace and hallowed space and rites and let it drip and let it rip and dip below and deep within the days and nights and let it drip across the cosmic blip and let it drip and let it still be still and let it drip and drop and drip still drip. Thank you. As the, so I break the stanza, I mean it's still Tartarima, but I break visually the stanzaic pattern to create a beautiful Clifford still-like drip of text. So here's another piece from Picture This. It is, um, there's a whole, or at least there was a beautiful Clifford still room in the modern section of, the, muse of um, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I think they kind of broke that up a little bit. It doesn't look as good these days. However, this, who's a good, no, it's, it, was a, it was a nice still room. It was great. So here's a, here's a poem about another painting in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Picasso's um, famous portrait of Gertrude Stein, which when he painted it, she said, that does not look like me. <laughs> and he said, it will. And it did. So this is called Trous on Picasso, on Stein, on and or in Tocles. <laughs> this, the most beautiful hand in all of painting, Solid, but soft as a big girl's should be. Rivaling that of the Mona Lisa made Alice Tocles moan. Thank you. And now I'd like to invite my uh, fellow poets and players up 